Many slides ago, we promised an alternate method to solve this problem. That method involves creating a free body diagram for block A, but then instead of a free body diagram for block B, we will create one for the system of A and B. Many times, this results in a simpler solution since the internal forces, the static friction between blocks A and B, will not be part of the free body diagram for the system here. It's an internal force, so it's not counted. Here's our two systems. This one we've already done earlier, so that should be pretty straightforward. And system two is the new way of looking at the problem. Notice it has both blocks on it. System one, or block A, the same that we did earlier, right? We've still got the friction force on this one because static friction is an external force to this system and you need to include it. So we have one equation here, sum of the forces in the x direction, and here's what the sum of the forces in the y direction give us. System two, you can see it's a bit simpler than the uh, diagram we used earlier when system two was just block B. We have F app acting to the right. We have the kinetic friction between the system of A and B acting to the left. Now the gravitational force is acting on the combination of blocks A and B, so we write it like this, MA plus MB times G. The ground is exerting an upward normal force on the system and is represented as normal of A plus B. The static friction force between blocks A and B is not drawn here. Why? System 2 is defined as the combination of blocks A and B. Therefore, the static friction force between blocks A and B is an internal force. Internal forces are not shown on free body diagrams as they cancel each other out as explained by Newton's third law. Right? You have one force going this way, the other one is equal and opposite, so their sum is zero and they will not contribute to the motion of the entire system. Newton's second law, we apply it in the x direction and we have the applied force minus the kinetic friction force is equal to the sum of the masses in the system times the combined acceleration of the two blocks. In the y direction, we have the normal force and we have gravity pulling it down and that's going to equal the acceleration in the y direction which is zero. So we come up with, here's the normal force for the system of blocks A and B. We list the four equations that we've come up with, and they all have to be true at the same time. So we have a system of equations, and time to start get rid getting rid of the kinetic friction force right here. Well, what is the kinetic friction force equal to? It's mu times the normal force on A plus B. The normal force is MA plus MB times G, and we're going to substitute that in for the kinetic friction force. Right. We, we're using this equation here, and what else are we using? Well, that's what we're using. We're putting the mu k in front of that and substituting in for the kinetic friction force. We take the equation from the previous slide, do a little algebra, and find the acceleration of the combined system. What's nice is we've seen this before when we did the independent free body diagrams for blocks A and B, took a little less algebra because we didn't involve the static friction force yet. Now we would make the similar statement that we did earlier where the acceleration of the whole system has to equal this acceleration right here and we're just going to go ahead and call it A. So that's when our static friction comes into play. We proceed as we did earlier and you can go back and see what we did. And fortunately, we achieve, we achieve the same answer for the maximum applied force before the block slip. So two methods were shown here. And uh, it would be a good time to go back and review this. There was a lot going on in this part of the presentation.